Now, the next part here, we talk about the chemical properties. You can see for lithium, sodium, potassium, what is the electronic configuration? 2, 1, 2, 8, 1, 2, 8, 8, 1. What's the pattern? It's the 1 over here. So for group 1 elements, as, I, as I've said just now, they have 1 valence electrons. Okay, which is also listed here. So one electron in the valence shell. Because of the electrons in the valence shell, they have similar chemical properties. One electron in valence shell, all of them, so similar similar chemical properties. So now you know that the chemical properties actually depends on the electrons in the valence shell. Okay, now, so what are some of the chemical properties? We know that alkali metals are very reactive, as you can see from the video just now. Okay, that's the first thing over here. So, how? So what are some of the examples? You can see that the sodium tarnishes easily. So that means from silvery it becomes it loses its luster. Okay, it loses the shiny, uh, loses its shininess. Okay, that's what we call by tarnish. Tarnish easily in air to form an oxide. So in this case, if sodium reacts with air, it will form what kind of oxide? Sodium oxide. Okay, this is just to give a bit more context to this example. So in order to prevent this reaction, what do we do? So we store it in oil to prevent reaction with air and moisture. Okay, so it's to prevent reaction with air and moisture. It can react with the water in the air. It can also react with oxygen in the air. Now, so uh, looking here, okay, what are the sum of the chemical properties? Okay, as it goes down the group, okay, you must take note that the reactivity increases down the group. Okay, we talk about down the group, the reactivity increases, and the next one we talk about reducing power. So in actual fact, when we say this reducing power, we can infer that alkali metals are reducing agents okay so this example of your redox taking place here so alkali metals are actually reducing agents as you go down the group their reducing power increases their reactivity increases why the key is why okay now think carefully here why do atoms want to bond Okay, you talk about react, react is to bond, right? Reacting equals to bonding. Now, why do these alkali metals want to bond with other elements or with other uh, atoms? The key here is to become stable, remember? Okay, this is under your chemical bonding. To become stable, what do they need? They need an octet structure. Okay, let's not use the word octet. They have a, they need a noble gas electronic structure noble gas electronic structure and how do the group one alkali metals do so what they do is they will lose their electrons okay how do they get this these alkali metals they will lose one electron now this is in regards to the background why do they bond however how come why is it so that the reactivity increases? This is the nucleus. Okay, what does it contain? It contains your proton plus neutrons. Protons are what charge? Protons are positively charged. These guys here are your electrons. Electrons are negatively charged. So you can see the attraction between the electrons and the proton is what keeping the electrons close to the nucleus okay now as you go down the group the size of the atom increases okay so what does it mean it means that this distance over here increases you can see obviously as the distance between the electron or I should say the valence electrons and the nucleus increases the force of attraction okay force of attraction between the electrons and the protons decreases so it makes it easier to lose Okay, so in this part here, it says that as the size of the atom increases, the ease of losing electrons from bigger atoms increases. Ease, that means it means that it is easier for 
bigger atoms to lose electrons. Okay, it's easier for bigger atoms to lose electrons. Okay, now, so this talks about the trend in chemical properties. Now let's move on to the specific chemical properties. First up, we talk about alkalis okay, reacting with cold water, generally just water. Alkali metal plus cold water, what do you get? Alkali plus hydrogen gas. Can okay, I say again? Alkali metals can react with cold water, so you put alkali metals with water, what are you going to get? You get alkali with hydrogen. Okay, example of a uh, example of alkali that you know is sodium hydroxide. Okay, so example, sodium hydroxide. Okay, now remember your alkalis are actually soluble metal hydroxides. Okay, you throw any alkali metals into your water, you will get a soluble metal hydroxide with hydrogen. The thing interesting here, as I said, is to know the pattern. Okay, so as the met uh, alkali metal okay goes, that means for example lithium, then we go to sodium, potassium, and rubidium. Okay, as it goes down some more, we know that lithium will be the least reactive. Okay, but still reactive, but it's the least reactive amongst them all. And as we go down, we know that francium is the most reactive. Okay, as you can see from the video previously. Now, in this case, it's not good enough to know about the general reactions and the reactive the trends in the reactivity you must know what is the equation you must know what you can observe so as you can see from the video just now lithium it reacts quickly interestingly it floats on water why because low density okay low density and it has no flame okay it's no flame it's not um, it's not vigorous enough to produce the flame okay now for sodium it reacts very quickly so you can see we put contrasting words like very to make sure that people understand that which is faster and we also say that sodium melts and it burns with a yellow flame so in this case here lithium has no flame sodium has a flame and what happens okay lithium floats on the water so that's floating nicely whereas for sodium it will like it will like keep darting over there, it's like keep moving around quite quickly. So darting around the water surface. And the last one, we have potassium. Okay, it reacts violently. Okay, it darts around the water surface all again, and it has a lilac flame. Lilac means purple. Okay, lilac means purple. So in actual fact, the reaction of water for lithium, sodium, and potassium, there's three things to note. First, you talk about the rate of reaction. Okay, all talk about the rate of reaction. Quickly, very quickly, violently. Okay, so this is um, with regards to the rate of reaction. Okay, so first one we talk about a, okay, this is my green pen. Okay, first thing we always talk about the rate of reaction. Second one we talk about the, okay, let's talk about the flotation, how, how it is on water, how does it behave on water. Lithium floats, sodium darts, potassium darts around the water surface. So first one we talk about how quickly it reacts, second we talk about how it behaves on the water surface and the last one we talk about the flame. Lithium has no flame, sodium it melts and burns with a yellow flame and last one potassium reacts with a lilac flame. So three things to observe with regards to its reaction with water and obviously please know the equation if you can't deduce it memorize it okay if you can't deduce it memorize it these are important equations which you should know okay now lastly we talk about it being a powerful reducing agent okay powerful reducing agent so how do they um, become reducing agents what they do is they lose their valence electrons so they give away their valence electrons and these electrons will go to other elements okay, other elements and as we know from redox we know that by when other elements gain electrons they are being reduced okay? reduced because they gain electrons 
because they gain electrons. Okay, so now you can see here that when the alkaline metal loses its valent electrons, it gives it to other elements, and these elements become reduced because they gain electrons. And if my lithium loses electrons, what happens to it? This process is actually also known as oxidation because lithium loses electrons from Li to Li plus. I lose one electron, this is oxidation. Okay. And the way it goes is that why are they powerful reducing agents is because they lose their valence electrons easily. Okay, so just take note of this chemical properties. We got two things here to take note. One we talk about it reacting with cold water. Okay, when it reacts with cold water, what do we have to observe? We have to observe three things: the vigorous, the uh, rate of reaction, the behavior on water, and the last one is the flame. The other thing that we talk about the chemical properties is about the reducing it being reducing agents, powerful reducing agents. Why do they do so? Because they lose their valence electrons easily. Very powerful because it's the valence electrons is lost easily. So just take note of this thing over here. So we are done with our alkali metals.